If you've ever wanted to go to a drag show, you're in luck. Columbus is a great place to see drag performers. For more, here's Buckeye TV reporter Spencer Carver. The drag scene in Columbus, Ohio may not sound like a prominent one, but this Midwestern city has more to give than you may think when it comes to the fabulous world of drag. I interviewed Sean Applause, an influencer who is very familiar with the drag scene all over the country, to see what he could tell me about Columbus's drag shows. How many drag shows do you think you've been to in your lifetime? It's ones that I can remember. Oh, mm -hmm. None. <laughs> ones that I was present at allegedly um gosh thousands I love drag shows where did you start going to drag shows like what city did you live in what was the well, scene I grew up in Dublin in Dublin right up there in uh, I, the, up there and um I grew up in Dublin and I would sneak out of my parents house through the back door and I would drive down to Columbus to the short north here and I would go primarily to Axis Nightclub and Union Cafe that are sister bars right across the street from each other they would always have a lot of shows going on. Columbus is like this hidden little gem when it comes to drag. There is a ton of drag here in Columbus um, which is really interesting Interesting because when you think of Columbus, Ohio, it's a very urban place, but you don't necessarily think of like the gay mecca of like the New York or Chicago or LA is. Um, but when it comes to drag, drag is, I would say, bigger here than anywhere else, honestly. Yell OH! Just yell OH! OH! <laughs> Even if you live in Ohio, you don't have to miss out on the magic of drag. Reporting for Buckeye TV, I'm Spencer Carver. Ohio State football takes on rival Michigan on Saturday, November 26th. Both teams have an undefeated record this season, and tickets are on sale now, with, pre with resale prices reaching in the thousands of dollars. Ever wonder what music students like? Well, it depends on how they are feeling, what they are doing, and even the weather. Reporter Audrey Nair has more. Music is a huge part of people's lives, and what music people listen to can regulate or reflect their moods. With college being a roller coaster of emotions, let's see what students are listening to. How does the type of music you listen to change based on your mood? Um, I definitely go for like slower songs if I'm feeling like like I'm in a mood. Like I go for upbeat, like pop type stuff if I'm feeling happy, but. A day like today when it's gloomy and stuff, I definitely go for like slower indie type stuff. I definitely sort of pick to my mood and when I'm, when I'm, I think when I need inspiration I go with music that sort of inspires me and gets me thinking about the stuff that like makes me care about living. So if I, I have like different playlists set up for different moods, so depending on sort of mindset I'm in or what I'm up to, so it's like working out or if I'm just, you know, um, in the a more dancing mood or a more, I guess, in my feels type of mood, I switch the playlist based on that. What type of music do you listen to when you're sad? Right now, I would say Tolerate It by Taylor Swift. Um, more R&B, like especially like protest music and like political music, I care a lot about. And it like gets me angry, so it moves me out of sad into being angry. Not only do students listen to music while they're walking to class, according to the New York Post, nearly 50% of students listen to music while studying. What kind of music do you listen to when you study? I like to listen to a lot of like lo-fi music, like, like remixes, I'd say like on SoundCloud. Yeah. Uh, typically lo-fi or like covers of music. Pop music, but instrumental versions of pop music, because it's like, it doesn't mellow me out too much, but keeps me focused without distracting. With Buckeye TV, I'm Audrey Nyer. Scheduling classes can be a tough time for everyone. Balancing your major classes and required GEs can be tough. Reporter Brooke asks students what their favorite and or easiest GEs are. When scheduling classes, a big portion of your schedule is taken up by required GEs. Many students don't know which GEs to take, which ones are the funnest, or which ones are the easiest. So we ask students what their favorite GEs are. Two Ohio State seniors share some of their favorite GE classes. Uh, so I took a beer and wine class last year, and in that class we basically just learned about the origins of beer and wine, and then uh, we even got to do some tastings. And then I also took a persuasive communications class when I was a sophomore, and in that class we 
really we did one paper for the whole entire year about a topic of our choice and aside from that we just took a couple quizzes. I took uh, children's lit literature GE and it was really fun. I'm an education major so I got to learn about a lot of different children's books and then I also took history of art which was really fun to learn about Roman art and architecture. After talking with students, it is clear that there are many different ways these students find out about these easy and fun GE classes. Um, people in group meets talk about easy GEs and their recommendations of one they enjoyed, and you can also look them up online too. Yeah, so a lot of people actually recommended beer and wine to me just because it's a common interest that me and a lot of my peers have. So a lot through uh, word of mouth, friends, communication, and then I did look up like OSU classes online to see which ones I would be easy A's. I'm Brooke Litherland with Buckeye TV. Next on Buckeye TV, we'll learn about OSU Women's Acapella Group and No Shave November.